And yes, we are live. Here we go. Sergio Matai. Good morning. How are, how are you? Well, I don't know. Is it good morning? Because you're you're in London now. So what is it? Good yes, evening? It's a good evening. Good yeah. evening. Good Hi, evening. <laughs> hey, so thank you for getting on the show. Um, there's so much I want to talk about. Uh, I know you place a lot of folks around the world, but in particular in Eastern Europe and Ukraine. We could talk about that later. But maybe you could introduce yourself, your company, what you do, what you're about. Um, hi, Jack. Again, great to be here. My name is Sergio Matei. I'm the founder of Index. Index is a remote-based platform helping enterprises like uh, Vodafone or Twilio hire remote software developers. Primarily, we focus on uh, Europe, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Before launching Index, I, I uh, co-founded a platform of hiring uh, um, and managing uh, translation, uh, uh, freelance translators. Uh, we grew that company to about 2,000 clients uh, globally, serving uh, clients in US, uh, EU, UK, uh, and localizing content in 100 plus languages. That's pretty amazing. So now, do you still do that business or, or are you kind of focused primarily on the recruiting now? Currently, primarily focused on in index, but uh, I started that business 12 years ago, um, literally after university mm -hmm. and uh, after graduating. Uh, and um, well, it was, and it is a great, great company. It's growing. Uh, it doesn't need me as a founder has a great management team um, and it sells uh, um, 100,000 customers globally. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, which is, uh, which is uh, I'm, I'm proud and uh, humble as well for what, what the company um, came about and even without the founder uh, continue, continue growing. That's fantastic. And, and so, so right now you're really highly focused on the recruiting and it's nationwide, I mean, worldwide. But there is a lot of focus within Eastern Europe because that's where, even though you're in London, that you're from kind of the Eastern uh, Europe area, right? Yeah, I was born in Moldova. Um, I, um, I left the country um, and lived in the US and then moved back to Europe here in UK. And I was helping uh, my friends in San Francisco and Silicon Valley uh, in New York high remote developers from Ukraine, from Moldova, from Romania, from this region, which I, I, uh, I knew and um, I have friends as well. And then I said, okay, maybe I should do a bigger business. Maybe I can do it at scale. Maybe I can help more companies, not do it like a, as a hobby, helping some friends, maybe do it with, with uh, enterprises and do it at scale. So that's why in 19, just before, a year before, uh, actually a little bit less than a year before pandemic, I, I started uh, the business. And then in COVID, it, it actually accelerated since everyone was was open and uh, was uh, looking to hire remote. Uh, we were, yeah, we we're just in, doubled uh, in, uh, in just a couple of months. And then um, we grew, just in pandemic, ten times our wow. our revenue and uh, uh, client base and developers and um, people looking to for remote jobs as well. That, that's another impact of of um, of um, this pandemic in a positive way. So, Sergio, if I understand it correctly, so that a lot of the work you're doing is for remote people and finding folks who are you know tech professionals in you know, Ukraine, Poland, uh, Romania, what have you, and, and introduce them to opportunities that could be in London, it could be in Silicon Valley, it could be on Wall Street, really across the board. And I wasn't aware of this till recently, but it seems in that part of the world, there's a huge amount of tech talent, a, a, a huge amount of STEM people who are really well-trained as computer programmers, software engineers, um, you know, college educated and also speak, you know, English pretty well, right? Is that? Yeah, Eastern Europe is the second biggest talent, tech, 
talent yeah. hub of the Silicon Valley, uh, believe it or not. Um, it's home of hundreds of thousands of uh, tech workers, uh, educated um, English uh, speakers. Um, yeah, you would, and Ukraine actually is, is one of the biggest country of, by population in Europe, Poland as well. Then you have Romania and um, yeah, um, uh, Balkans uh, as well. Um, how did that happen? Like why, all, you know, how did it kind of turn into, you know, this kind of burgeoning tech hub in, in, that, in that area? I think just because it's um, the amount of people, of, of course, you have a lot of uh, population. Mm -hmm. um, you have good uh, schools like math schools, um, particularly uh, coming from Soviet Union, uh, countries out of Soviet Union. Um, and then you have as well, um, young generation that is uh, uh, interested in the West, uh, um, educated um, by watching movies in English or by um, reading in English and then, um, really Europeans are very uh, uh, closer to the culture of, of the West. And um, by, by those three, uh, three things, at least, you, you, you have access to a wide range of talent, um, which is unique in a way because of those three things. It makes so much sense because, you know, it's really smart on your part because places like Silicon Valley, and, and now it's really, it's almost like post pandemic or during the last few years, it seems like every company now is a tech company, no matter what you do. And um, everything has gone digital so that the, the, the need is amazing. You know, I could just speak to what I see here in the US, I just you, you cannot keep up with it. Each company is trying so hard to find software engineers, developers, you know, you name it and they can't. So if you're able to find people who are, you know, uh, trained, who went to school for it, who understand the uh, uh, American culture and the language, that's a smart move and they can work remote. That's a great way to, to you know, funnel people over to the companies that need the help. So, so that's, it makes a lot of sense. Like, are you finding it? Um, I mean, this is really a tough question to ask, but so let's say for the Ukraine tech workers, um, can they just, you know, if they're migrating to other countries, get back to work or is there a demand for that? Or are you, are you in a position that you could help people find jobs that have been displaced? So currently we have, um, we have uh, 15 developers in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually reallocated before the war started, just before uh, that started. Some of them are with their families in Ukraine right now, mostly in the West part of, of Ukraine. Uh, it's just terrifying, um, to be honest. It's who would think that this is possible in, in our age and we, we, we fear the war and we feel that we didn't, we haven't been there at the global uh, second world war, but it feels like uh, we are repeating the same mistakes as, as, as I don't know, as humans. Uh, doing so much harm to others, it just I don't know. I, I don't have words to yeah. to um, to explain what is going on. I don't understand, and it's uh, um, I'm originally from Moldova, but we we have uh, uh, friends in Ukraine. We have um, actually um, uh, helped a lot of refugees in Moldova. Uh, population is three million, and we got about. 300,000 refugees uh, coming wow. into the country. So it's almost 10% of population uh, um, during the last uh, 30 days. And so, um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a refugee crisis, it's a human crisis and just, yeah, um, um, something I cannot um, explain. Uh, um, but it, at least we, I mean, there's not much we can do as a company, but at least we can do something. And um, we, we, we hired uh, people in Ukraine, even um, for, uh, for our clients, but also for ourselves uh, as a company in our customer support or maybe recruiters or sales functions. 
um, and we're looking to hire anyway. We, we are not uh, uh, stopping uh, doing that. Some of our clients for their developers, um, uh, they, they provided support, financial support, or they helped them reallocate and paid their rent uh, during the first month uh, or two. Um, what we did for all developers, we, we paid them in advance. So making sure they have cash. This is like what happened uh, in February, uh, March. Uh, we paid them uh, a month in advance. Um, and really, yeah, uh, donating for causes like for volunteers on the ground, for um, helping refugees, at least doing something. I mean, um, it's, I know being here outside, it's, I cannot feel the, the pain and the, um, the horror uh, that people are going through uh, these days, but at least uh, I can do something um, or even sharing on LinkedIn or just speaking about that, it's already um, uh, doing something and at least we can uh, start by with doing that yeah it's hard to imagine because here in the states we're so physically removed from it you know intellectually you you know you feel the pain but it, we're so far it's it's kind of surreal but yeah. from where you grew up and you have family there friends there and actually probably and even london isn't that far away actually it's not that far. So it's, 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 it takes on this real presence. I was uh, speaking, I think I mentioned a little before the show that I interviewed this uh, guy, uh, Jesper, who's uh, the CEO of LogPoint. And um, he's in, in, in Denmark and it's, it's wild because I wrote about him in a piece for Forbes, just like I'll say four months ago, I'm losing track of time. And at the time, Den Denmark was ranked like the happiest nation in the world. Fast forward only like three months, and now he was telling me about Russian planes flying overhead. Maybe they rumor had it they may have nuclear weapons there, and clearly it was done to scare them because you know Putin was saying, "Hey, we don't want you to join NATO." And in just a few months, it's just mind numbing to see how that just changes overnight, how how it's so dramatically different. And what he was also saying too is that in addition to the the boots on the ground war that Russia has been invading, has been waging a cyber war. And I wasn't aware of that all across Europe, you know, messing with hospitals, just doing really drastic, horrible things to mess with everybody and it gets kind of a fear campaign. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's like you said, it's just, it's hard to just kind of wrap your head around how in today's modern age, you would think we'd be above this and, and, and it's just not. But on a lighter note, on a lighter note. So in terms of, for people who are watching this now, now that we bummed them out and made everyone depressed. <laughs> so on a more positive note where you probably see this in the UK and you probably see it in Europe, despite all the, all the things that are happening is that, you know, people are still looking to reevaluate their lives and careers and figure out, Hey, what can I do? Do I want to stay doing what I'm doing? Do I want to join the great resignation? You know, do I want to pivot to something else? Do I want to reinvent myself? So when you're kind of work, if somebody wanted to move into tech, do they have to have kind of a college degree, university degree in some sort of tech? Do they have to be an experienced software developer? How open for people who want to kind of look in this space because they know it's so high and growing? What do they need to do and can, can they make that pivot? Yeah, I think uh, we uh, primarily we focus on experienced engineers, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that have at least three years of uh, coding um, background. But as well, uh, we help um, uh, grow new engineers because there is uh, a shortage of, of supply right. in this market. There is a huge demand. There is not enough uh, talent to, to cope with that uh, demand. Uh, so what we do is that we, we invest in uh, education uh, um, um, internship programs that 
are um, for uh, three months. You can uh, join our company for three months, and then we help you learn and we um, work with you. So you learn the basics, and then if you like it, if it's something that that fits your uh, you, um, your skill set, sometimes you don't need to have the the college degree or the university degree. It's just the way you you think or the way you approach things. Um, um, if there is the right attitude, if there is motivation, you will find a way how to code, how to learn it. So we seek that, um, as well as we sometimes recommend a specific um, boot camps, uh, which are uh, some are short, some are one year boot camps that help you learn to code. And after that, uh, they will place you in a tech job. And if you get the job, then you pay the course fee. If you don't, then they don't charge you anything. So I think this model is quite um, um, motivational for, for the um, uh, employee that wants to change career and doesn't want to pay or doesn't have the money to pay for, for another education. Um, so those would be the options, um, at least that I know, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's really smart. I'm seeing that here in the US that the boot camp, the upskilling, the training is, is really taking on a lot of steam for the reasons that you articulated is that there's just not enough people. So you can't manufacture more people, but you can take people who have the drive, the, you know, the interest, the motivation and train them. Uh, now, do you, have to, do you have to have a certain skill? Like you mentioned, you may not have to have a degree or what have you, but is it an analytical mind? Is it a data-driven mind? Like what kind of, or, or can you be like a liberal arts major and be able, but not good with numbers, be able to, 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 to pivot? What do you think? I think that there are cases that that's possible, but overall, I think it'll be easier. I don't think you can train everyone to code. It's just, um, as you cannot train anyone to paint or anyone to, mm -hmm. you know, to um, to write uh, well or to write at, at, the, at the professional level. Um, so it, it really comes to the fact, yeah, you need to have some analytical mind, maybe uh, inclination to math, even that it's not enough sometimes. Um, yeah, in my in my experience, it's not for everyone, but at least if there is, um, I think if there is motivation and there is, is a good coach, a good uh, teacher, then you can do it. I think maybe you cannot be the best, but at least you can learn the, the, and be a good programmer. Uh, but you need to have the motivation. Uh, you need to have a good teacher. That'll be the at least the, the basic. Yeah, it's because it does seem, and you you know best that just just the the needs keep growing, and, and I don't see it. I don't see it pulling back, right? Because as as things are kind of developing, you're just going to need more and more of them. So there has to be ways, in addition to just poaching from one person, one company to bring to the other company to do what you're doing, you have these kind of training modules, these coaching. And um, I, I guess also, is there kind of could be a career path where you start in a certain area that's maybe very coding light or very, you know what I mean, where, where you can kind of learn some basics and then just kind of move up? Is that is that the case? That's, that's a great question. Uh, you could start with maybe data analytics mm -hmm. or um, um, business analytics, if you're more business inclined, uh, start with those roles, maybe learn a bit of SQL or databases. Um, and then from there, maybe gradually learn a bit of a Python or um, um, you may start with statistics, maybe with um, uh, some modeling, uh, some R or um, sort of learning from, from more from uh, applying Scala, which is also 
difficult uh, um, at first. You may start with web design, maybe PHP, maybe more, more uh, sort of web development, uh, which is easier than um, programming um, front end or back end or more um, user interfaces. I think those are the, the entry uh, points. Maybe start with QA uh, um, and doing more manual QA testing, and then from there, learning on the side to code. Yeah. Uh, in I data analytics, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. speaking to so many folks who, you know, CEOs, chief people officers, or C-suite, there's such a need for that area. So that's a, that's a great suggestion. It seems um, that area is also just booming. And it, it, you, you do, it sounds like you do have to have some good numbers, some analytical, you know, kind of a good way of thinking, but it seems like maybe the entry point isn't as hard to kind of start learning how to code. So that could be, if you want to go into that hot area, hot growth area, data analytics, data, you know, business analytics, that might be a way to get in there. Now, you don't, you don't, uh, I don't think you guys recruit for this, but I imagine too, you could be in marketing, you could be in sales, you could be in accounting, you could be whatever, and to join a tech company that's going hot. You know, have you ever placed those folks? So that's not really your, your thing. We, we mainly focus on the software developers, yeah. uh, verticalized like niche in this specific uh, niche. However, I don't exclude in five or maybe more years, we're going to go more horizontal and hire designers, uh, mm -hmm. maybe um, um, marketing uh, people. Um, but for now, we're, we just stay focused because of so much demand um, just on software developers. Um, maybe later we can add more, more roles. Speaking of demand, what do you foresee with Web3 when you have the metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, you know, NFTs, cryptocurrency exchanges, blockchain. I mean, it's just wild. I mean, like, like how, you, I, you guys probably don't have enough time in the day to, to find enough candidates for people. Like, what, where, where do you, what do you, like, what do you see this grow? Like, do you think it's going to be the metaverse? Do you think it's going to be blockchain? Or it's going to be just all these areas just growing all at once? Yeah, it's 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 a hot market. I just saw uh, of a day there, there was a job that was paying seven hundred k a year for a web free developer. It was three hundred k in uh, base yeah. and four hundred k in equity. So that was almost a million. <laughs> and this is Somewhere. where this is this is in in, in US. In, yeah, in US in um, in a startup um, that is developing uh, NFT or some some kind of uh, blockchain uh, technology, I don't remember, but- um, The numbers seem so high. So I don't, do you ever go on blind, the blind app? Are you familiar with it? No, no. So, okay, so US, it's a US thing, it's uh, called blind. And and the reason you mentioned, because it's kind of, you could post, you have to be verified to go on there. So you, you would have Sergio Matai, you know, at index, but then once you're on there, you could you could post anonymously. So that you wouldn't have your name, so you could just talk, you know, however you want to do. And on it, they'll talk about salaries all the time. Now, I don't know if they're exaggerating or not, but like what you were saying, some of them, the total compensation is staggering for relatively young people. Like you said, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand plus plus bonuses, plus other things, and and it's 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 eye opening. It's it's so wild. Yeah. So. So I think demand is crazy for for yeah. for specifically for web free. Yeah. Um, you know, smart contract engineer, um, yeah, um, NFT, Ethereum, um, metaverse. I think all of those buzzwords will just be be more and more needed in in US, but also everywhere uh, in the world. Um, I think even uh, there is a job, uh, it's called Web3. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a platform just for those jobs, web3.career. Uh, so they just publish daily uh, 20, 50 jobs for, um, 
or engineers in crypto and, um, and blockchain. When you start doing this, did you have any idea that it would be growing like this? Did you foresee it or you no. just lucked out and said, you know, it seems cool. It seems like a fast growing area. I want to be in it, but not knowing that just this would just be like out of control. Had had no idea to start it. I just got lucky, to be honest. I did. I, I was grinding. We were grounding with my co-founder. Yeah. Looking to to find this, you know, holy grail of startup, which is product market fit. Yeah. Um, and then COVID started and it accelerated what what was going to happen in the couple of years, but it mm -hmm. just happened, you know, uh, overnight. And now it's the way the, the challenge is more like how do you scale how do you manage all of this how do you make sure you, you provide the quality at scale mm -hmm. um, and that's another problem to have i guess um, um, but there is not not yeah i didn't think um, the, the world will get to, to this stage or at least I, i'll get lucky to to to, to ride this wave of uh, remote uh, hiring of future of work. How, do you, how long do you think this could go on in terms of just the demand, the need? Um, I mean, is there something, I mean, is there gonna be a time where it's gonna stop or it's just, this is the way things are where it just grows exponentially. You know, you go from, you know, horse and buggy to a car to a such and such and it keeps kind of evolving. And is this just, it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Yeah, I think that the, the the latter. I think that the fact that um, we just we didn't build much. I mean, we had um, even in e-commerce in um, in um, in all of this new technologies in blockchain, we didn't build much. Uh, yes, software is eating the world, but we have seen nothing. Like if we would look in the net. If we would look 10 years from now, mm -hmm. maybe uh, it, it, we as humans will underestimate what, what we can do in 10 years and overestimate what we can mm -hmm. do in a year. But I think um, in 10 years from now, we'll just think, you know, uh, this technology grows as an S curve. Uh, specifically, when you look in front of you, it seems like incremental. But when you look backwards, like 10 years ago, we didn't have much Zoom or iPhones, like a box. That if you tell me 20 years ago that there will be a box, you know, 20, maybe 30 years ago, there'll be a box that, you know, you would connect with other people and you could see them and you could, you know, you'll send the waves. Um, you'll say like, I'm a lunatic or I'm just <laughs> right? you know, a crazy person. So I cannot imagine what we can build um, in 30, 20 years from now, you know, as this technology evolves and as more people are building it and contributed to, to, to you know, to this uh, things that are good in one way, but if misused may, may be not so good. So we need just to be careful how we build it and um, put in place the right principles so it doesn't uh, make us uh, bad or doesn't um, make the world, you know, worse uh, as it is. Yeah, it, to me, it's exciting because, you know, speaking to people like yourself who are, who are building businesses, who are, you know, creating things, building platforms, apps, innovation, it's really neat because there's enough doom and gloom going on. So it's cool that, you know, you hear about, people who are, who are doing good things, people, you know, putting people to work, how, you know, helping get, you know, make a nice, in your case, make a, a very nice living doing what they're doing and doing what they love. So it's, it's, it's really amazing to see. Do you, do you notice that any of your clients, are they paying in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies or are people asking to be paid in cryptocurrencies? We, we had a couple of those cases, um, but I don't see that, uh, at scale. That's why I think it's just day zero or day one. It's not even just scratching the, the surface yeah. of this. Um, so it's like internet, you know, in yeah. the 90s, a couple of enthusiasts, a yeah. couple of people using it. 
Um, so we'll see, but so far, um, just one or two cases, not yeah. much. It, the reason I ask is so trippy because I spoke to these go, these folks from a place called Deal and Remote dot, remote.com and some others where you know they're the ones who do all the paperwork, all the back office stuff, so to make it easy for people to work remotely around the world. And what happens too is they offer, hey, you can get paid in Bitcoin or Ethereum or what have you. And so now, and this kind of blew my mind because I, I, I'm not a techie and I didn't grow up in this world. So I'm, I'm kind of still new and learning everything in this space. And so then it seems that you have these hubs like in Eastern Europe, you know, like we talked about in Africa, in, 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 in Latin America. And so now you have these tech hubs and they're doing well. And as you pointed out, they can make a whole lot of money, but they're getting paid in cryptocurrencies. And if they make the right choice of what cryptocurrencies, then they're making even more money, especially if they're a place and no offense to, to your, your, your people there. Cause I think Argentina and Venezuela, their currency not doing so well. So if you're in a place like that, instead of getting a depreciating, you know, asset, you know, you're getting something that's appreciating. So it changes the whole complexion of the world in a way, because now you have these places that are going to have these tech scenes, which money is in so they can kind of promote economy, help the economy and for the people to do really well. So it just has so many, uh, to me, like so many spillover effects that are positive. And I agree with you. You got to be careful. Like it could kind of things could go bad too. You know, they'll say like social media a lot, you know, could really harm, your, you know, your health, particularly young people. Um, it gets toxic, but it's wild when you see these communities where, well, you probably see it firsthand, right? Like you, you place these people, you know, put, put, turn back the clock, you know, in the Ukraine or Poland and these others, and they're making a lot of money. Great job, great career. Maybe you get paid in crypto and they're doing well. Like how awesome is that? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a it's 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 if we again if we had this conversation just like you said three years ago. You're like Jack. What are you talking about? That is nuts. <laughs> what what paid in crypto? Paid in and you know tech in, in living in 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 you know in Argentina and making a fortune. What this is nuts. This is wild. But here we are. Yeah, exciting. I'm, I'm I agree with you, Jack. It's exciting yeah. times and. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I think if we don't mess uh, and we, if yeah, um, yeah, we as humans, if we act together and we support each other and we um, do our best to, you know, to come with the good values yeah. and build with with um, empathy, with love and care, with compassion, you know, all of these good values, uh, then we'll just have a, a better world uh, um, for all. Um, that's great. That, that's a great way. That's great. A great way to wrap it up on uh, that sentiment in, in, in a, a time where it's so odd because you, as you mentioned, so on, on one level, things are pretty good, but another level, things are really horrible for others. So it's a bizarre, bizarre world. And I don't know about you. Sometimes it's hard. It, I, just to be very frank, it's weird because, you know, you're happy about some of the things that are going well, but then you see what's going on in other places and you're like, how can I be happy when this is happening? So it puts just, it's just, it's, it's hard to process. It's hard, it's hard to put it all together, but I'm, but I'm glad you're doing well and index is doing well and, and, and things are growing. Any, any last things I didn't ask you that, you know, you think people would want to know about index and, and what you're doing or how they could reach you if they're interested, you know, in, in, um, you know, getting a job in tech or um, kind of learning about more about what you do? So uh, our website is index.dev uh, or they can email me at matei, uh, M-A-T-E-I uh, at index.dev. Um, yeah, happy to help uh, if they're looking to hire remote developers or if somebody is looking to get into tech or find remote jobs. Um, always happy to help. That's great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out, and I know this is a both a good time for you and a challenging time for what's going on. And and hopefully next time we speak, God willing, everything is better. <laughs> hopefully there's a, a resolution, and then and that could be all positive. But in the meantime, stay safe. Hope all is well, and we'll just we'll just keep in touch, my friend. Thank you, Jack. Well, thanks. Great speaking with it's you. It's great catching up again, my friend. Take care. Take care. Bye bye.